King David of Scotland was a central figure in the development of the Scottish Kingdom, as during his reign, Scotland experienced changes to its political, administration, military, and the development of monastic institutions. David was born in the year 1084 to Malcolm III and St. Margaret of Scotland. But looking at the line of succession, David was far down on the list as he was the youngest son of eight boys, but still a prince. Yet, by the time David was nine or ten, both his parents had died. His father was killed at the Battle of Annick, along with one of his brothers, Edward, who was Malcolm's designated heir and his mother is said to have died of grief a few days after the battle in ill health. A succession crisis soon developed, and civil war broke out between Malcolm's remaining sons and their uncle, Donald. An account in the 14th century tells us that David and his siblings were immediately besieged at Edinburgh Castle by Donald's troops, but the accounts at the time of Margaret's death mention no siege. One of our sources, the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles, tells us that the Scots chose Donald as their king and then drove out all the English who had been granted settlement in King Malcolm's court. King Malcolm had given refuge to many English exiles who had fled England after the Norman Conquest, most notably Edgar Etheling, a claimant to the English throne, as he was descendant from the House of the Wessex dynasty. Clearing of the old regime normally meant also removing any political allies which the English exiles were certainly a part of. When the news reached the Anglo-Norman court in England, the commander of the English at the Battle of Annick, Robert de Mowbray, was rewarded as stated in the history of the English states. When the news was heard, the king summoned the earl, bidding him come to court, and saying that he would hear his words and according to what he should hear, would be well rewarded for doing right. King Malcolm had led several raids into England during his reign. By the time David's uncle Donald was consolidating his control on the Scottish throne, David was in exile at the Anglo-Norman court in England, along with his brothers in 1094. The King of England at this time was William II or William Rufus. A rather peculiar set of affairs for David to be in the kingdom which Fawcett had slain his father and brother. But for King William, treating the surviving sons of King Malcolm well would suit his plans for Scotland, as he had a man in the waiting who was a legitimate heir to the Scottish throne, Duncan, another son of King Malcolm by his first wife. Duncan had spent his time as a hostage of the Normans as agreed by King Malcolm and King William the Conqueror as a term of the Treaty of Abernethy in 1072. Duncan was raised within Norman society and was accustomed to the Norman culture, even being knighted by King William. So a loyal sworn man on the throne of the Kingdom of Scotland would be perfect for the English king. The book David I, The King Who Made Scotland by Richard Oram states that when Duncan went to William Rufus, offered him his military service in return for a grant of his father's kingdom, and swore fealty to the English king when he bestowed Scotland on him. Duncan began to raise troops from the levies of the Norman nobility, and in return they would be promised lands and titles, as they had when Duke William conquered England. After all, Duncan had Norman allies to call upon. As for David, he was too young to accompany his half-brother back to Scotland. With the support of the Normans, Duncan defeated his uncle in 1094. Donald then fled the kingdom. Duncan was now crowned King of Scots, but only ruled for six months, a combination of his political followers being foreign as well as himself being seen as a foreigner. The Scots rose up in revolt over the new king's allies, which Duncan was forced to relinquish. But with his power base now weakened, his uncle Donald returned, and Duncan died in a later battle. Donald's remaining reign was short, as he was an elderly man with no heirs, and there were still plenty of sons by Malcolm III to either fight their uncle, or try to appease him and work towards becoming heir by diplomacy. One son, Edmund, did try this, but by 1097, Donald was defeated again 
by a force led by Edgar Etheling, the son's uncle by their mother, Margaret. This time, Donald did not escape, and Edmund was sent to a monastery. One source, the Chronicles of Malrose, states, In the year 1097, King William sent Edgar Etheling into Scotland with an army to drive out Donald and establish King Malcolm's son, Edgar, as king, and this he also did. Edgar was now King of Scots. It's most likely David did aid his brother in some capacity, but we have no information on what role he played. William of Malmesbury mentions that Donald was slain by the craftiness of his youngest nephew David. By the time of his older brother's reign, David was a teenager, but as he had two older brothers still alive, his options in Scotland were limited. Even in England, there was not much prospect for the young prince, as the English king was satisfied with the situation in Scotland. The northern borders of England were secure, thanks to having a loyal man on the Scottish throne. So William's interests were elsewhere. But situations can change rapidly in the medieval world. All it takes is the death of someone, like a king for example. On the 2nd of August 1100, King William Rufus was killed in either a hunting accident or an assassination in the New Forest. With his death, a new king ascended to the throne, King Henry I, younger brother to William. And after four months on the throne, Henry managed to secure a marriage with Matilda of Scotland, Malcolm III's daughter. The marriage was a political move for Henry, and he needed to shore up his popularity and to secure a solid dynasty by marrying Matilda. He was uniting his Norman line with that of a member of the House of Wessex, as well as the House of Dunkeld in Scotland. For David, this granted new opportunities for him. He was able to immerse himself in the Anglo-Norman court culture and perhaps learn from them. After all, the Normans had been successful in England, so why not learn all and use that knowledge to one's advantage? After all, David was now the brother-in-law to the King of England, and just like his brother Duncan before him, David was being taught to live and fight as a Norman. William of Malmesbury states on David's development, rubbed off all tarnish of Scottish barbarity through being polished by intercourse and friendship with us. As David was now allowed access in the innermost circle of the court, he would have seen how the administration was run, which in England at this time was a well-oiled machine. By the year 1107, David had spent most of his life now in England, but in the same year, his brother Edgar died. His death is recorded in the Annals of Ulster and the Chronicles of Malrose, which states, In the year 1107, Edgar, the King of the Scots, died on the sixth day before the Ides of January, and his brother, Alexander, succeeded him. With Edgar's death, David's fortunes again changed, as in Edgar's will, an agreement was made that David would receive lands in the south of Scotland. Yet the new king, Alexander, may have been hesitant to honour such an agreement, and David may have had to rely on King Henry to help obtain his inheritance. And it would be some time before David did gain his new lands, as the only evidence we have of David acting in his new lands is in 1113, when Selkirk Abbey was formed. We don't have any chronicles detailing David's activity from 1108 to 1113. There are suggestions in the chronicles he was in Scotland, and in another that he was in England. We don't know for sure where he was or what he was doing. His patron, King Henry, had taken control of Normandy from his brother in 1106 after the Battle of Tinchebray, and would spend the next few years trying to maintain Normandy. So it's unlikely King Henry would personally help David, but there is no firm evidence in the Chronicles that give us a definitive answer. By 1113, David was in a considerably more powerful position. David was now a powerful landowner, now that his inheritance was begrudgingly recognised by his brother, although not obtained through warfare, but certainly using the suggestion of violence. David also managed to secure a marriage to Matilda de Selis, a widow and the Countess of Huntingdon and Northampton. 
David sought the permission of King Henry and David's sister, the Queen Margaret, who was supporting his bid for the marriage. King Henry agreed and allowed the marriage. David's rapid rise to power in Scotland and England was not well met by everyone. There is a poem from the time period that reads, It's bad what Malcolm's son has done, Dividing us from Alexander, he causes, Like each king's sons before, the plunder of stable Alba. Like his elder brother Duncan, the Gaelic elite were not happy that David, who was also incorporated into the Anglo-Norman culture, which they saw as foreign, now held significant power and land in Scotland, and was now known as the Prince of the Cumbrians and Earl of Huntingdon. David also now had lands in the Midlands of England. During 1114, we have records showing David in attendance to charters being issued, but not much else for the next years of David's life. His sister, the Queen Matilda, died in 1118. We can only speculate on David's reaction to his sister's death. We have no records of him being at the Anglo-Norman court around his sister's death, nor her funeral. As his sister, was the closest thing to a motherly figure since David's mother, and is responsible for the position he was now in, David must have been grief-stricken. The Chronicles of Maurose simply states, Matilda, Queen of the English, died. David and King Henry's relationship can be summarised as protégé and mentor, as David was King Henry's sworn right-hand man. After all, David held the borders of Scotland, and because of this, the borders were laxed and not so heavily fortified, apart from at Carlisle, which would later cause issues between David and Henry. As in 1122, Henry visited Carlisle and began works on fortifying the city after receiving it from his vassal, Ranulf. But also in the same year, Henry's illegitimate daughter, Sibella, died. She was the wife of Alexander, King of Scots. Sibella and Alexander had no children. Alexander did have a bastard son, but the Scots' rules of inheritance were not the same as the primogenitor ones in England, meaning David would be king if his brother died. But the laws of primogenitor would give Henry grief in Normandy, as his brother's son, William, had sparked an uprising with some backing of the Norman elites. Henry headed for Normandy to quell this uprising, and David may have joined him as a sworn man to fight and lead in the royal army, which defeated the rebels by March 1124. But by April, everything would change for David, as his brother, Alexander, had died. Now the path to kingship was open for David, but he still had to face a few challenges, which we will explore in the next episode.